What's poppin' T-Squad? It's me, Keisha, a.k.a. Color Me Pink, and I'm here with this week's All Tea, All Shade, Put a Ring on It, Season 4, Episode 2 Review. So, on this episode, we see the counselor Stacy talking to Dunbar and Chance. You know, last week, Chance was defending the fact that Dunbar was, you know, disrespectful to her date and trying to, like, school him and come at him like he was her daddy. She don't agree with that. She kind of liked that daddy energy. And it was like debating back and forth with what Stacy was saying to her. And Stacy was like, you know, treat the dates as you would want to be treated. And I mean, that's just what you're supposed to do in life, period. So Dunbar and his confessional was like, she missed the whole point. I was showing we weren't friends. I wasn't trying to be her dad. Well, you might not have been trying to be her dad, but that's the way it comes across. And Chance was like in her confessional, I like the daddy energy. I love it. I love it. Okay, girl, if you love it so much and everything is hunky-dory between y'all, then why are you here if you're not going to take constructive criticism about your relationship? Like she didn't want to listen to anything that the counselor had to say and on next week's episode it's going to get even worse that i think that they're not going to even finish um the process because she hard-headed and don't want to listen i think dunbar actually is kind of like taking heed to what stacy said but since chance wants to be so argumentative he's gonna continue to do what he's doing because he can get away with it if she was siding with the counselor i think that he would be a little more prone to trying to change. Catherine let us know that after her date, she put the flowers that her date gave her on Ricky's side of the bed so he can remind her that, you know, there are other fish in the sea and other people want her. And he even admits that he hasn't taken her on a date in quite a while. He hasn't bought her flowers in quite a while. I'm like, well, what do y'all do? That's why I question their relationship. Like, is this a real relationship? Because it literally feels like they're just friends. Like, there's no romantic anything going on between them. Um, She says that she felt like she and Mark were compatible and that he listened to her. And it was something that, you know, she doesn't get a lot from Ricky. All of the ladies, however, choose not to go on dates with the people that they already gone on dates with. And now that it's the guy's turn, Joya tells Jaysha that there ain't going to be no kissing on the hand or none of that. And Dr. Stacey was like, okay, so now I got to get on you like I got on Dumbboard. Like you cannot dictate what goes on on that man date. Like you cannot control these situations. But, you know, these people are hard-headed and they feel like they're going to do what they want to do. So Jaysha's date uh has come and joya issues no boundaries since he didn't give her boundaries um on her date she's not going to give him any his date celine arrives really pretty girl really really pretty and joya makes sure to mark her territory by giving him a nice little sensuous kiss in from the in front of old girl you could tell like she was low-key pressed like, dang, this girl is cute. She got a nice shape, beautiful smile. Like, uh oh, like I might be in trouble. And let's be honest, Jaysha as his eyes just lit up when he saw her baby. He was most definitely attracted to Celine. So we then go to Ricky. He's preparing for his date. And there's a whole bunch of other people there while he's preparing. And we find out that him and Catherine live in the same house as his mama and daddy, his sister and her kids, and his brother often comes by the crib. And I'm like, why all y'all stay in this house together? Is this his house or do y'all stay with his parents? I need answers because it's making me feel like he still live at home with his parents and you over there with them. Because why would his parents and his sister and the kids all be living with him? What is going on, Jesus? I, it's giving me very much just their mama house. <laughs> and why are y'all living like that? Like, what's going on? It, it's just too much. Too much for me. So, his date, Sheila, arrives. And he likes her red hair. Mind you, Catherine has a tone of red in her hair. But to be honest with you, 
the hairstyle and her coat looked a lot better on his date than it did her. I feel like all that her and her head weighs her down and it's just not a cute color that compliments her skin. So Catherine in her confession was like, I don't think she's Ricky type. But then again, I don't know what Ricky type is. How have you been friends with this man for like 20 some years, been dating him for however many years and you don't know what his type is? This relationship is so weird to me. I know it just can't be me. All of the signs is saying that these two are just friends because what is happening? What is happening? That you tell me you don't know what his type is, so you don't even know if you his type. Like, make it make sense. So, Jaysha is on the date with Celine, and he is vibing out with her. Like, the chemistry is off the Richter scale. Like, both of them are just looking at each other, um, sizing each other up. Like, it's just blazing. So, he loves when he finds out that Celine is into meditation and astrology and travel and she speak a little Spanglish honey and she ain't pressed to have no kids and won't have any kids unless she's married and it seemed like you could see the checks being marked off in his head of everything that he wanted a woman was with her like low-key I feel like Joya got competition when it come to her. Like, even if he don't choose her to go on another date on this show, baby, you better watch out in real life and if on the case one day he get mad. <laughs> because they just seem like they would be really cute together. I'm sorry. I feel I felt more of a chemistry between them than I did him and Joya. So Dumbor has his date with a girl named Crystal. And when the girl gets to the house, Chance sitting all on his lap, making him wrap his arms around her, just doing a lot, just marking her territory as well. And when he gets on a date with Crystal, I honestly didn't think that she would be his type. Like she's an all right looking girl or whatever, but he loved the fact that she was covered up. She wasn't showing too much. Like he is a traditional man. Like he literally comes across like he's everybody daddy. So it ain't just an issue with him acting like he chance daddy. That's just his personality child. Maybe it's because of how old he is. But she said that when she walked in the house, she thought that he was Tay Diggs child. And I said, girl, what? You need glasses. <laughs> you need bifocals, honey. You need a magnifying glass. Did you thought this man was Tay Diggs? If anything, he looked like Floyd Mayweather. But that tickled his fancy child. He loved that. She says that she knows her place in a relationship is to be submissive. And as soon as she said that, his ears got to uh, perking up and turning red. And he was like, oh, really? And then when she got to talking about the Lord and the fact that she a minister, like he really loved that because he's in the church, he's into ministry. And I feel like a woman like her would be perfect for him. Perfect. I think Chance got a little bit too much spunk in her for him. She got too much of a worldly <coughs> spirit to be with him. I think that he loves her. I think that he cares about her. But I think that maybe she's not a good look for him. Maybe that might be the issue because I'm trying to figure out like what is the problem like between these two? Because he says that he thoroughly enjoyed his date with Crystal and that it was like the most best, like the most pleasant, um, thrilling date that he has been on in quite a while. Like he was so mentally intrigued by her. Like, mm -mm, okay, girl. So Ricky Day uh, is like, you know, do you have any children? And he was like, yeah. And he was like, do you have a problem dating somebody with kids? And she was like, no, it's not. I don't have a problem dating anybody that has a child. It's the situation with the parents is what, or with the, you know, the other parent is what I would want to know. Like, you know, because she ain't got time to be getting into it with nobody. So he gives her an example of some of the issues that he faces in his relationship with Catherine. He says because with his baby mama, like she worked, I think in like the nightlife scene or something like that, he said, or she be, you know, having to stay out late and don't come home. And he ends up having to spend the night at her house. And he was like, granted, I'm on the couch, but Catherine doesn't like that. And so the girl was like, mm, I don't know about that either or whatever. But then she switched up and was like, you know, but as long as I know what's going on and I know it ain't nothing like that, I wouldn't see no problem with that. Lies. Lies, fairy tales, and fallacies. Girl, you know dang on well you are going to feel some type of way about your man spending the night at his baby mama house. Stop. 
stop, stop, stop. Because there is no reason and no excuse. Because my thing is, why do you have to go over to the house to watch your child? Why your child not coming to you when she at work? Once again, it's making me feel like you live at home with your mama. I'm so not understanding this. I'm really not. Why do you have to go over there to watch the kid? It seems like it's a bunch of drama going on. And I wouldn't want to have no parts. And I understand why Catherine would be feeling some type of way. So after that, we see Dr. Stacy go to have a private one-on-one -on -one session with Dunbar and Chance. So she sits down with them and she was just like, you know, I am so unclear about what is the problem between you two. Um, Dunbar was like, you know, she always asked her father before she asked me for approval on things. Like, you know, them getting a house or getting a car together or whatever the case may be. And she was like, that's not true. And Dunbar was like, well, you know, when we're moving or with your book, you always go to your dad first. And it's like, I'm the second opinion. So Chance was like, I feel like he's pulling stuff out of a hat. Like that could not be the issue. So Dunbar was like, I didn't know how to handle. I don't know how to handle a strong, independent woman. So Dr. Stacy was like, well, if you're making up these stories then I need to know or I need to talk to you one on one, like to find out like what exactly is going on, because they're not on the same wavelength about what the problem is. So she asked to talk to him alone. Chance leaves the room. And as soon as she leaves the room, like this man is literally on the verge of tears, like tears had already welled up in his eyes. He was inhaling and exhaling, taking deep breaths like he just looked like one big tear. And so she was like, you know, what's going on? And he was like, you know, I've never told anybody this ever in my life. And then the tears just come. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, has was he touched on? Like, what is going on? Because it's obvious that it's something really deep that he's struggling with that obviously he can't talk to her about. So I'm so confused about what's happening here with Dunbar. But like I said, we saw this, the uh, sneak peek of what's going to happen on next week's episode. And once again, Chance is going to be very argumentative when it comes to what Dr. Stacy has to say about their relationship. So once again, I'm just not understanding why they're there if she's not going to listen to what anybody has to say to her. Overall, I'm going to give the episode uh c minus it was cute it was cute for what it was y'all let me know what y'all thought about the episode down below in the comment section make sure to thumbs up this video like and subscribe and hit that notification bell button i love you all and i'll see you on the next video bye